The third section in the Hawaii Trade Secrets Act is the section on injunctive relief, section 482B-3. Now, if you're not familiar with legal technology, before we read this section, I want to go over two key words. One is injunction, or injunctive relief. That means the same thing. That's the noun, which means restricting someone from doing something. The verb, however, is enjoin. You can enjoin someone from releasing a trade secret by getting an injunction. Now let's take a look at the actual wording of the statute. The first sentence states that actual or threatened misappropriation may be enjoined. So if your client is facing a possible release of a trade secret, because threatened misappropriation can be enjoined, you don't have to wait until the trade secret is actually divulged before you take legal action. Of course, if your client finds out after the trade secret has been divulged, this statute will protect them too. The trouble with trade secrets is that they're really only valuable to the owner while they're a secret. So this definition or this injunction is going to try to help them before it's been disclosed, but it's not going to deny them relief if they only find out about disclosure afterwards. The next sentence says, upon application to a circuit court of the state, an injunction shall be terminated when the trade secret has ceased to exist. So the first sentence says you can get an injunction, but the second sentence says the injunction can be terminated if somebody applies to the court to ask for it if the trade secret has ceased to exist. For instance, if Coke has an injunction against Pepsi for releasing its formula, that injunction would last as long as Coke wanted it to, but if Coke decided to publish the formula because it wanted to patent it, then the injunction could be petitioned at the circuit court level to be dismissed because once it's patented and the 20 years have expired, anybody could use the, the um, formula. Okay, um, just going back to the next sentence, it says, or the rest of that sentence, the injunction may be continued for an additional reasonable period in time in order to eliminate commercial advantage that otherwise would be derived from the misappropriation. So even if the trade secret has ceased to exist, maybe because Coke has just given up because Pepsi has posted the formula all over the world on, on blogs, Coke could say, fine, I'm going to let it be out in public because I'm actually going to patent this. But the injunction could be retained for an additional reasonable amount of time to eliminate the commercial advantage of Pepsi that could otherwise be derived from the misappropriation. Paragraph B is interesting. It talks about under what special circumstances someone would be still allowed to use the trade secret, but have to pay royalties to the trade secret owner. That's the gist of the section. Now let's take a look at the language so you can figure out where that comes from. It says, in exceptional circumstances, an injunction may condition future use upon payment of a reasonable royalty for no longer than the period of time for which use could have been prohibited. So there's a couple of uh, legal terminology issues that we should go over. First of all, to condition future use indicates that the court could say you can use it in the future under certain conditions. They're just saying it in a very legalistic way. And a royalty is a fee that you pay to somebody who has created something. You're probably familiar with the concept of music royalties for use of their product. Now, before we interpret this fully, let's go take a look at the definition of exceptional circumstance that occurs later in the paragraph. Now, this definitional section could have been included in the definition section we looked at earlier, or it could be here. Statutes can do either. It says exceptional circumstances include, but aren't limited to, and we've seen the includes language before, a material or prejudicial change of position prior to acquiring knowledge or reason to know of misappropriation that renders a prohibitive injunction inequitable. That's a long way of saying somebody finds out about a trade secret, and they don't know it's a trade secret at the time. Perhaps it's a new way to manufacture something, and they think one of their employees invented it themselves. They don't realize the employee actually has used it as a trade secret from a former employer. So this second company goes ahead and builds a manufacturing facility, invests millions of dollars to do this, and only then, after they've done this, do they realize that this trade secret was misappropriated. 
that would be exceptional circumstances under this definition. In that case, going back to the first sentence under B, they would be allowed to use this in the future. That's the future use conditioned on paying the original trade secret owner a reasonable royalty. The intent of this is to do justice to both sides, to do justice to the person whose trade secret it is, while recognizing that party who built the manufacturing has clean hands in this case, at least to a certain extent. And paragraph C under here simply says, in appropriate circumstances, affirmative acts to protect a trade secret may be compelled by court order. This means that a court can do other things other than simply enjoin somebody from doing something. They can take affirmative acts to say, not only are we going to enjoin you from doing this, but you need to give all of the material that you've already created using this trade secret back to the original owner. That would be one example of an affirmative circumstance that the court could require under this injunctive relief statute. There are rules of court referenced here, but this is just the rule of court that defines what an injunction is, and this is the Hawaii Rules of Civil Procedure.